Hey, what's up everybody? It's Luke, and you're watching Luke the Gathering. Thanks for checking out the channel. Today was day two, it's Saturday, of the Caverns of Ixalan pre-release, and we get pre-release kits, and we put together decks from that, and we compete. Yesterday, if you watch my video, I didn't do well. I went one and two in the tournament, and I was a little disappointed, and actually, it actually made me a little nervous to come back today because I was like oh my gosh I'm down on myself I don't I don't think I'm gonna do well um, I'm gonna suck and I actually really sucked when it was Wilds of Eldrain um, pre-release as well so I was just like man pre-releases just aren't my thing but 3 and O oh today wow I can't believe it I was so happy 3 and O oh. um, I think there were five people who went 3 and O oh. I think there are almost 50 people at the tournament today, um, and I was one of the lucky, not lucky maybe, but maybe top players, and that just makes you feel really good. Um, I chose not to go with three colors today, which I think was a really good idea on my part. I actually ended up going Orzov, which is white and black, and um, the deck performed really well, and I used, you know, the rares that I had to good advantage and um, the cards were really nice. I was, the the dinosaur decks were actually really pretty difficult to deal with um, in the sealed. I felt like they have so many dinosaurs that are just huge and they all have like trample or reach or stats that you can't compete with but thankfully I had some things that could compete, did compete and we got 3-0. and oh. So I got some uh, cards to show you from the deck. I also have a few packs um, that we got from the pre-release, and so let's uh, let's get to it. Let's see the deck. All right, I just de-sleeved the deck, and these cards are not really in any particular order. Usually, I like to kind of set the cards up in an order, but I didn't do it this time. So let's just go through what we got here. We got a rare to start off: uh, Tarian's Journal. It's a legendary artifact. You can sacrifice another artifact or creature, draw a card, activate only as a sorcery. So you can draw cards from it. Um, or two, and um, tap, discard your hand, transform Tarion's Journal. Becomes one of those legendary land caves, the tomb of uh, Aklazots. And this is cool. First of all, it adds black, which is fine, but you can also tap it. You may cast a creature spell from your graveyard this turn. If you do, it enters the battlefield with a finality counter on it. And um, it's a vampire in addition to its other types. That is great. Um, I got this kind of late in my final game. My final game was the most difficult game. We actually went past time. Um, when we do that, you have to go to turns. And on the final turn, I won. But I would have actually probably won a little sooner if... This hand got removed. It got removed via an abrade on the other side. But I definitely had creatures in the graveyard that I would have played out. Um, and that would have definitely outvalued my opponent. But it uh, didn't happen. But great late game card. I don't know. Early game. Maybe it's okay. Preacher of the Schism. Two and a black. This was pretty cool. I actually pulled this, I think, in my pre-release yesterday, but I didn't play black. 2-4 Death Touch for 3 is a really great rate. Hard to get past, especially, you know, if you play this on curve. And off, oftentimes you can get that white vampire creature token. And um, if you have more life, then you draw a card and you lose a life. That's pretty sweet. Ah, Deep Cavern Bat. This was really cool. This gets a card out of their hand. It's flying. It's lifelink. It's so annoying. Um, this in, yeah, this in conjunction with Amalia Benavides Aguirre. This hits for lifelink. Whenever you game life, um, Amalia explores. I mean, it's a great little combo there. And oftentimes at the beginning of the game, you can get these two things out pretty early. I was so happy when I actually saw the bat and Amalia in my opening hand. For one of the games that was amazing. Uh, Starving Revenant. This is a descend. I never really had descend eight. Um, 
So this didn't do much. It was kind of like a four, four for four, um, and just worked that way for me. I wasn't really a descent deck, so it's fine. Hidden Necropolis. This was cool because I actually did use the Discover Four aspect of the card. That's really cool in the late game. I don't like that it comes in tapped. In fact, it came in tapped, and um, I think it prevented me from playing something because it came in tapped that turn. But in the end, I think it was worth it. Clay Fired Bricks. This is a nice little artifact. You get it's sort of like finds you a planes. It gains you a couple life for two mana. Not bad. Um, and then it turns into after seven, <laughs> a, a spending seven. You you get two one one gnomes, and well, everything gets plus one plus one. Not the greatest. It's extremely expensive, but um, it's just another artifact for these artifact base decks, and it did it was fine. <clears throat> Sting Cave Crawler or Sting Cave Crawler is great. One three for Death Touch. Um, that's really cool. This is hard to get past, especially early game. And in late game, you know, they have big creatures. They don't want to attack into you because of stuff like this. Uh, Deathcap Marionette. This is also pretty cool. This is a card miller as well. Um, in black, milling cards is a good thing for the most part. 1-1 one, one Death Toucher. Again, this is great to save you from those giant green and red monsters that are here on Ixalan. Iron Paw Aspirin, which is a nice early drop. It turns into a, a 2-3 on turn 2 if you if this is what you put your you know token on. Um, just a solid 2 drop. Really good. Join the Dead, one of the best uh, removal spells of the entire format. Um, nothing more to say there. It's just great. Thousand Moon Smithy. This was fun to use. This actually won me a ton of games. It says this. When Thousand Moon Smithy enters the battlefield, create a white gnome soldier artifact creature token with this creature's power and toughness are each equal to the number of artifacts and or creatures you control. So you make a giant gnome soldier. It just grows with the amount of stuff you have. And then um, you can tap five and transform it into this land <clears throat> and then whenever it can add white, but whenever you cast an artifact or creature using mana produced by this card, you get another one of those gnome soldiers. So that is pretty backbreaking um, if you get this thing turned around. So um, I got it turned around, and a few times that was just getting these big seven seven eight eights out there. Really cool. Screaming Phantom, uh, two two flyer. Um, for three, two to black, mail a card every time, uh, it attacks. I love this card. I've seen this card on the best of sort of commons lists, and I agree. Three, two for four. It's a flyer. You get a gnome artifact creature token. That gnome being an artifact is super important. Bartolome de Presidio. I love that name. Um, this is really cool. <clears throat> it's a free sacrifice um, outlet. So if you like, you know, if you're gonna chump block instead of chumping, you, you just you block the damage on the declaring blocker stage, and then you sacrifice for um, the counter. It's really nice. So this thing can just grow and grow and grow. Oltec Archaeologists. Uh, this was fine. Um, just a 4 4. This is probably the weakest card, or the card I didn't like the most in the deck. This was sideboarded out and in at times. It scries 3 when it comes in. That's pretty good. You can get an artifact back from the graveyard. Well, that's not too bad. Spring Loaded Saw Blades. This is a great white card. It's Flash. Deal something 5 damage that is tapped. It doesn't work with Vigilance creatures, but. Um, this saved me a lot of times. And then it turns into a 5-5 five, five vehicle later that crews for one. Or if you tap two artifacts, um, it becomes an uh, artifact creature. Another chance. This is cool. You mill two, return two creature cards from your graveyard to your hand. I just think it's a good card. Instant speed two. Quicksand whirlpool. This is removal. Expensive removal. It can get cheaper with tap creatures does exile so um, it is pretty strong mephitic draught 
uh, this is cool. You, you know, it just comes in, you know, a little trinkety artifact for you to have around, um, which was important in this deck for sure. Lose a life, draw a card. And then when this goes away um, from the battlefield, you do the same thing. Draw a card, lose a life. Oh, I'm so glad I had two of these. Cloud Guards, really good. Greedy Freebooter, really good card. One drop, when it dies, scry one and make a treasure. Jeez. Chupacabra Echo, didn't do a lot for me, actually, in this um, in this uh, tournament. I thought it might, you know, do well for me. But I don't think this ever hit the battlefield. Tithing Blade, great card. Um, it makes uh, the opponent sacrifice a card when it comes in. And when you craft it with the creature, it turns into this thing where you gain a life and they lose a life. And this won me the game as well. Just that incremental plus one, minus one over and over was really cool. Ended up going 3-0. and oh. They did this cool thing where they spun a wheel, and if the wheel ended on you, you know, you got a prize. They had cool stuff like play mats and set boosters to give out. Um, when it landed on me, and I got, like, I got two promo packs for Eldraine, the last set. So we'll open that last. And then for um, the tournament, everyone got two set boosters for joining. And so that's really cool. Let's open up the set boosters and see what we get. Okay, so first of all, we got the Deep Cavern Bat, which was an absolute all-star in my sealed today. Throne of the Grim Captain. Somebody pulled this and said they actually made this work in their games. Props to them for that, for sure. And the rest are just uncommons and commons. Got the Plains land card. And the art card. Okay, nothing really there. Go to pack number two. We have a dinosaur token. Cool. Saw blades foil. Hulking raptor. Rare. Scythe claw raptor. This is uncommon. And the rest. Just those. Okay. Alright, let's check out the promo packs. Promo pack number one. Thunderous debut. Not the best. Tangle Span Lookout. And then all will be one. We got a mythic. Fun. And promo pack number two. Restless Fortress. I'll look out again and Archangel of Wrath. There you have it. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you next time.